أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم أخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمنا بنور الفهم وافتح علينا بمعرفة العلم وسهل أخلاقنا بالحلم وجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه اللهم اجعل أعمالنا خالصة لوجهك ولا تجعل فيها حظا لغيرك وصل اللهم على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته هذا في الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله um Ramadan is just flying away what are we in day number 12 now subhanallah we have to make the most of it we're busy with our we remain busy with our sarf just give me a second We remain busy with our sorrow. So we'll do as we usually do. We revise our skills. Add one more to it to go through some of our homework. Right. So everybody can you can say it with me. Um, we'll do the normal one, as you know, fa'ala, or what the root letters fa'ala. And then we'll pick one new root set of root letters as well, inshallah. Right. So everybody on the second bab. فعل فعل يفعل تفعيلا مفعل مفعل فعل لا تفعل المتعم فعل يفعل تفعيلا مفعل مفعل فعل لا تفعل أم Let's take, uh, what, what route letters can we take for today? Let's take, um, Hakama. Let's just call that. Hakama. Ha, Kaf, Mim. And on the first verb, we know Hakama means to pass a judgment. Uh, passing. Yeah, to pass a judgment. On the second verb, Hakama will mean to make something a law. To make something, or oh, no, rather, hakama will mean to appoint someone as a ruler, or to appoint someone as an arbitrator, to appoint someone as a judge, appoint someone as a judge. It's hakama. So we say that one. Hakama, you hakimu, tahkiman, muhakimun, muhakamun, hakim, la to hakim. Again, hakama. يحكم تحكيما محكم محكم حكم لا تحكم. We move on to the next girl. Um, فا أو فاعل. So let's go. فاعل يفاعل فعالا مفاعلة مفاعل مفاعل فاعل لا تفاعل Again. فاعل يفاعل فعالا مفاعلة مفاعل مفاعل فاعل لا تفاعل and we put our root letters for today on the the scale will become حاكم and حاكم will mean to, uh, to prosecute someone or to, to bring them to trial, to interrogate them, put on trial. Everybody can say that. Hakama, yuhakimu, hikaman, muhakamatan, muhakimun, muhakamun, hakim, la to hakim. One more time. Hakama, yuhakimu, hikaman, muhakamatan, محاكم محاكم 
Hakim la tuhakim. Our next, our next uh, scale, we have um, Afala. Everybody say that one. Afala. Yufailu. Ifalan. Mufailun. Mufailun. Afail. La to fail. Again. Afala. Yufailu. Ifalan. Mufailun. Mufailun. Afail. La to fail. And if we put our new set of root letters on there, Kaf mim, it will become ahkama. Yuhkimu. Ihkaman. Muhkimun. Muhkamun. Ahkim. La tuhkim. Ahkama yuhkimu means to make something firm or to strengthen something. Uh, yeah, to solidify or to fortify something. Ahkama. Can we say it again? Ahkama Yuhkimu Ihkaman Muhkimun Muhkamun Ahkim La Tuhkim. That means to fortify or to, to make something firm. Scale number five Tafa Allah. Everybody Tafa Allah. Ya Tafa Alu. Tafa'ulan, mutafa'ilun, mutafa'ilun, tafa'al, la tatafa'al. Again, tafa'ala, yatafa'alu, tafa'ulan, mutafa'ilun, mutafa'ilun, tafa'al, la tatafa'al. If we put our root letters in there, what will become? Tahakkama, tahakkama. Tahakkama means to have your own way. Or to like, yeah, to, to proceed arbitrarily, to make yourself the judge. So, so on the first, on the second verb, it was to make someone a judge. Yeah, it means it's reflexive on the second verb, to make yourself the judge. So, tahakkama, yatahakkamu, tahakkuman. Mutahakimun, Mutahakamun, Tahakam, La Tatahakam. Again, Tahakama, Yatahakamu, Tahakuman, Mutahakimun, Mutahakamun, Tahakam, La Tatahakam. Then on the sixth scale. Tafan, just one second. Yeah, we don't need to do this thing. Anyways, let's do um, that six scale again. I can, oh sorry. Tafa'ala, yatafa'alun, tafa'ulan, mutafa'ilun, mutafa'alun, tafa'al, la tatafa'al. Again, tafa'ala, yatafa'alun. تفاعلا متفاعل متفاعل تفاعل لا تتفاعل. If we take a new set of root letters and we put it on there, it will become what? تحاكم. Um, 
And what is tahakama mean? Uh, tahakama means to appeal for a legal decision or to, you know, to take someone to, like two people take each other to, before a judge. So, um, yeah. So, let's say that scale. Tahakama. Yatahakamu. Tahakuman. Mutahakimun. Mutahakamun. Tahakam. La tatahakam. Again. Tahakama. Yatahakamu. Tahakuman. Mutahakimun. Mutahakamun. Tahakam. La tatahakam. We go to our next scale. The next scale is in fa'ala. So everybody says in fa'ala. In fa'ala. Yan fa'ilu. In fi'alan. Mun fa'ilun. Mun fa'alun. In fa'il. La tan fa'il. Again. In fa'ala. Yan fa'ilu. In fi'alan. منفعل منفعل انفعل لا تنفعل and then our root letters حكمة they don't they're not really used on this on this uh, scale but we can form it nonetheless right so it will mean what إن حكمة ينحكم إن حكاما منحكم منحكم إن حكم لا تنحكم again إن حكم ينحكم إن حكاما منحكم منحكم إن حكم لا تنحكم what does it mean I don't know I don't think it's used in this part so uh, we just theoretically formed the scale with those root letters but it doesn't have to have uh, a mean and I think that's kind of, that's as far as we got to the scale. Right. Now, what I want you to start doing now is right, learning these scales, but going down the scale. Or, or, or not going down the scale, but I mean is knowing them one after the other. You're able to say these scales like this. Um, like know the order of the scales. Fa'ala, fa'ala, af'ala. Tafa'ala, tafa'ala, infa'ala, and then, um, you know, go on to the next ones that we're still going to, uh, we're still going to learn, we'll learn one more today, inshallah. Um, it's important because that's actually what you need in software. You want this, you want all of these templates arranged in your mind, right? Just like we had uh, in sort of last year, we had the scale fa'ala, and then yaf'alu, and then ma fa'ala, and then la yaf'alu, or rather before that you could have had fa'ala, and then yaf'alu, and fu'ila, and yuf'alu. Once you have those things arranged in your mind, um, and last year we specifically went down the scales, so we did, we did fa'ala, fa'ala, rather not fa'ala, you guys we just omitted that, but fa'ala, فعلوا فعلت فعلنا فعلت فعلتم فعلت فعلتنا فعلت فعلنا we had that arranged in our mind so we we knew okay it's always going to be first third person singular plural then you know for the male then for the female second person singular plural for the male then for the female and then became first person singular singular and then plural for the first person that is for male and female just having knowing that there's that structure arranged in our minds it's what gives us quick access to identifying where a word fits in on the scale right and that's part that's very important in sort and that's why yes we at the beginning of our class we go through it we say each one twice and we add a new set of root letters and all of that but in reality what you need to end up with in your mind is something like this فَعَلَى يُفَعِلُ تَفْعِيلًا مُفَعِلٌ مُفَعَلٌ فَعِلْ لَا تُفَعِلْ فَعَلَى يُفَعِلُ فِعَالًا مُفَعَلَةً مُفَعِلٌ مُفَعَلٌ فَعَلْ لَا تَتَفَعَلْ 
أفعل يفعل إفعالا مفعل مفعل أفعل لا تفعل تفعل يتفعل تفعلا متفعل متفعل تفعل لا تتفعل تفعل يتفعل تفعلا متفعل متفعل تفعل لا تتفعل إن فعل ينفعل إنفعالا منفعل منفعل إنفعل لا تنفعل and then add on uh, the last three that we're going to do as well so having the scale arranged like that in my mind not only in a sense that I can say it but even just you know visually having it arranged like that in my mind it gives me quick access to where words fit in and I'll be able to see a word and say okay this word fits on this scale and it is this specific type of word on that scale and that's essentially what we're trying to work towards with me like that. Okay. are there any questions before we, we move on No questions? Okay. Then what we'll do is um, we will move on to our next scale, inshallah, before we start marking stuff. Um, let's see. How does the next scale look? The next scale looks like this. If ta'ala. If ta'ala. Can everybody see that? If ta'ala. What's extra in this, in the scale? We have two things extra. There's the hamza at the beginning. Tell me, what kind of Hamza is that? We have an extra Hamza at the beginning. Anybody want to tell me what kind of Hamza that is? Hamza to wasl. Hamza to wasl, yes, correct. How do you know? Because it's pronounced. Is that the one that... No, no. Hamza to wasl is the one that... Three, three. Whenever we don't have to, we don't pronounce it. So, I mean, so how do you identify it? And you put an extra letter before that, Maulana, then try and read it. Okay, if it's in the middle of a ayah or something. Right, so um, that, that's correct. Um, if you put something, if you put a word before it, then we're just going to read it right through the Hamza. We're not going to pronounce it. That's correct. But I'm, what I'm asking is, in the scale over here, on what we have on the screen, how do you know that this is a Hamza tul wasl, the one that you read right through, and it's not a Hamza tul asl or Hamza tul qata, or the one that you always pronounce? The one that you pronounce, Malana, correct me if I'm wrong, please, has a little, um, I don't know, Hamza sign? Yes, that's correct. I don't when know what you right? call that. Yeah, it's a Hamza, right? So the one that you write, or oh, oh, sorry, that we always pronounce as we well have a Hamza. So I'm going to go through these scales quickly and then you just identify it. So here we have our first scale, right? Fa'ala, there's no Hamza to begin with. Fa'ala, nothing there. We have this one, Af'ala. Okay, can you see that? What type of Hamza is this here? The one that you can't leave out. The one that you can't leave out, right? That's a Hamza tul Asr. And that's the only one that has a Hamza tul Asr. If we go carry on, a scale five doesn't have a Hamza, a extra Hamza in it. Scale number six doesn't have an extra Hamza in it. It has an Alif in the middle. 
Så er det ekstra hamza. But then you see a scale number seven, it has an extra hamza, right? But what kind of hamza is that? Hamza to wassel. Hamza to wassel, the one that you read right through. Let's look at number eight. It also has an extra hamza at the beginning. If ta'ala. But what kind of hamza is that? Hamza to wassel. Again, hamza to wassel. Number nine, the same thing. If Allah. It also has an extra hamza at the beginning, and it's also a hamza to wassel. And scale 10, it also has an extra hamza at the beginning, and it's also a hamza to wassel. Why am I identifying that for you is so that you know that from scale 7 till the end, they all have extra hamzas, and they are all hamza to wassel. However, the fourth bab has an extra hamza, but that's not a hamza to wassel. That is a hamza to wassel, or hamza to qata, the actual hamza. Sorry, Marina, why do you call it the Hamza and not a Alif? When do you differentiate? Okay, good, good question. Uh, alif is the letter. That it, it only comes in the middle of a word or at the end of a word, and it's only a pulling sound. Right? If you say the uh sound, then it's not a Alif. Then it's a Hamza. If you're just pulling it like al fa ti fa that pulling sound, that ah sound, that's a alif. Um, so, for example, like babun, you got there. Like, there we go. Like babun, that alif there, that's a alif. But, um, like if I say, fa run, fa run, that's not a alif, that's a hamza. When I say the, that, you know, that sound, that cut, or, or that letter that like has a cutoff of sound. That is a, uh, that's a Hamza. Only the pulling one is actually called the Alif. And we have different types of Alifs that you would have learned in, uh, in Nahl last year. We would have come across the, the Alif Mamduda uh, and the Alif Maqsura, the, those signs of femininity. And then you just get a normal Alif that, you know, comes in, in the replacement of a, you know, of a weak letter sometimes. And sometimes it's, you know, just the add thing in there in a scale, like in the word fa'ilun. So, the alif is the pulling sound, the one that you actually pronounce that's a the hamza. So, the scale number eight, what do we have extra here? We have extra hamza to wasl at the beginning, and then we have extra ta, but that extra ta comes after the first root letter, right. So which which babs have extra tas now? Number five has an extra ta. Number six has an extra ta. And number eight also has an extra ta. But number number five and six have the extra ta at the beginning. Number eight has an extra ta after the first root letter. All right, so we have the verb if ta'ala. If ta'ala. And um, you would certainly have come across many words on the scale before. Ihtada, uh, yeah, amongst many others. And the word ikhtilaf as well, also more than that. The word ikhtilaf is on yeah. the, is on this eighth verb as well. Ikhtalafa. On falafa, on the eighth verb. Ikhtalafa. So let's, uh, let's say the scale. If ta'ala. If you know, if you knew the scale in fa'ala, this one will be easy as well. So if ta'ala. Yaftailu Ifti'alan Mufta'ilun Mufta'alun Ifta'il La Tafta'il A bit of a mistake there. Let me just open up one of the elements.
كيلو ليش لو كان اكثر من افتعل يفتعل افتعالا مفتعل مفتعل افتعل لا تفتعل اجين افتعل يفتعل افتعالا مفتعل مفتعل افتعل لا تفتعل المتن افتعل يفتعل افتعالا مفتعل مفتعل افتعل لا تفتعل That's our eighth verb. What's the connotation of the eighth verb? What meaning does it convey? The eighth verb conveys the meaning of uh, do, do, doing something for oneself or can have a new meaning. Um, so for example, ihtada. Okay, here we have a different one. Iktasaba. Kasaba means to earn. Kasaba means to earn or acquire something. Iktasaba will mean to earn for oneself. Or hada means to guide. Ihtada will mean to guide, to, to be rightly guided, to guide oneself. Um, um, and then here yeah, we have an example. Intasara means to, uh, to take revenge. In Tasara can also mean actually, you know, to bring victory for oneself. So it has a meaning of doing for oneself or uh, has a new meaning. And this word, this verb is also quite common. 963 occurrences in the Quran on the scale. It's not as common as number two and number four, but it's second or third most common. If ta'ala. So, well, all of them are important, but you can see this one is third most important of these uh, of these scales because it gives us access to the most uh, Quranic words. And that's what we're essentially trying to understand. Uh, we're trying to understand the Quran. So that's if ta'ala. Okay. Any questions on that? Oh, no, no, Muff, will we be getting any of the corrections to the pages that we just saw or to the answers of the exercises? Yes, I can send those to you. Uh, which, which, which ones are those for the Arabic, um, for the Quran stuff, or for those verbs that we spell the verbs? I can send it all to you, actually. Yes, please. Okay. Okay, so now let's go on to our Arabic in the Quran section. So what, what I needed to do for, for this section of the homework for next week, inshallah, is uh, Pull out the, uh, the Al-Mazid fee for table eight. So you're going to do Ikhtalafa, Iqtasama, Iqtasaba, Istama'a, Ittakhada, Ittaba'a. See what's happening at the end. Tell me, what do you think the root letters of this word are? Ittakhada and Ittaba'a. Ittakhada. Ittakhada. Okay. Uh, I asked you as in just because I want to do trick. Um, so on, on this scale, yeah. So we add one. Ta, ha, and dal. No. This verb is actually. No, there's no fa. So 
this girl actually, the root is actually Akhada. Hamza, Kha, and that. That. And Akhada on the first Bible also means to take. Right. But just put those root letters on the scale exactly. Hamza, Kha, and that. How would it sound? Anybody want to give it a go? It should sound like this. Okay, go for it, Bishmina. Ittahada yattahazu ittahazan muttahizun muttahazun ittahiz la la not sure about the last one, Molina. That's good, yes, Um When you say the kha, like itti kha, then you must say the round mufakham. Itti kha, then. Um, that's good. But I want, what I was asking, if you actually put the hamza, the, how will it sound? It will sound like this. Can you hear that jerking sound at the beginning? It's not a nice sound, is it? It's not a nice sound to pronounce either. The Arabic doesn't like to be a jerky language. It likes to be a flowing language. And so what happens, we just change the Hamza to a Ta. We assimilate the Hamza into the Ta. And then instead of having we just have no. well, I'm telling you that so you don't get confused when you're doing the homework. It's supposed to be you write it here. Molano, would that be now um, a general rule? So if you see a a ta with the shada at the beginning with the hamzatul wasl uh, before that, you should know that there's probably a it's replacing a ha, a hamza. Right. Not not probably, possibly. Possibly, okay. Right. And, and I'm going to show you why now in a moment. If you look at the very if you look at the very next example, what we have the ittaba. It looks like the same thing, isn't it? Yes. It looks like the same thing. But here the root letters are actually tabi'a. So it could be that there's actually two ta's there. It could be that there's actually two ta's next to each other and that we just put them together and replace it with a shadda. Or it could be that it's actually a Hamza uh, that we that we just assimilated with the ta. So, so if you so if look if you're looking for the root letter or looking for the word in the dictionary, first assume that it's a, 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 a there's two ta's, and if you can't find the root letter, then assume then then go to the, uh, to the yes, that would be a good uh, a good way of looking at it. Amara, um, when we when we carry it right through the scale, though, how do you yes. take it through? Do you take it as a hamza when you're carrying it through the scale, or do you take it as um, like so for ittahada? Do you take it um, as it goes through the rest of the scale? Do you take it as a hamza, or do you take it as as two ta? Like, I mean, okay. So you you know that the root of the word, right? You know that the root of the word is a hamza. So if you want to look up the word in the dictionary, you're going to go to the letters. Hamza, Ka, and Dal, right? But, but when you actually say it throughout the scale, you maintain that assimilation. So you'll say, Ittakhada, Yattakhidu, Ittikhadan, Muttakhidun, Muttakhadun, Ittakhid, La Tattakhid. Right? So you don't ever bring that Hamza sound back into it. But you know that the Hamza is there in meaning. So that assimilation carries right through the scale. So why I pointed this out to you is so that you know none of the others 
I have a shadda at the beginning, on the first letter, only this one, these two. And there's two reasons why that could be the case. Either because the root letter is a hamza and we don't like to say a jerky sound, or because it's two taz, and when we have two of the same letter next to each other, we just assimilate them in writing. Right? Is that clear? Like if you wanted to say this ittaba written out, it's exactly the same thing. It's just written differently. You, if you look at the first one, or if you if you look at this word over here, and say it, you'll say ittaba, and this one ittaba. It's exactly the same thing. I'm pronouncing it exactly the same. I just wrote it differently. As for the as for the one before this one here, there is actually something that's changing. The Hamza's changing to a ta. Um, right? So I just wanted to point out to you that when you have that shadda at the beginning on the first root letter, do any of our babs have a shadda on the first root letter that we've learned so far? Which babs have an extra shadda? Two, two has a shadda, but it's not on the, on the first, first letter. Right, two has extra shadda, and what other one has extra shadda? The, the first bab also has extra shadda. But for both of them, where are those extra shaddas? The middle the letter. second bab is ta'ala. So it's on the second root letter. Right? And and on the first bab, ta'ala. It's also on the second root letter. Isn't it? On the ayin kalima, ta'ala. Whereas in these two examples, we have a shadda on the first root letter. Because remember, it's first the root letter, then the ta. So here we have a shadda on the first root letter. If it's a shadda on the first root letter, then you know it's actually most likely on the, on the eighth bar. Most likely on the eighth bar. And there's something happening there. Either the, the first root letter is a ta, What's a Hamza? Uh, sometimes it, it can be also like a wow. Um, it can be like a wow, like for example, in the case of Taqwa. What's the root it is of the word Taqwa? That's the tricky one. It actually comes from the word waqa, wow, half, yeah. But if you put that on the eighth verb, how will it become? Iwtaqa. Iwtaqa. We don't like to say stuff like iw in Arabic. Right? So instead of saying iwtaqa, we just assimilate it into a ta and then we get ittaqa, yattaqi, ittiqa'an, muttaqin, muttaqan, uh, ittaqi. It's a bit of a tricky word over there, but I'm just showing you that sometimes we assimilate that first root letter into the ta. I will identify which bab it's on by seeing that there's a shadda on the first root letter. Um, and then when I see that shadda on the first root letter, I know there's something funny potentially happening there. Either I had a hamza or a wow or something like that, or yeah, that got assimilated into a ta or got changed to a ta, or at the beginning, there's just actually two ta's there. Is that clear? Any questions on that? So it's not only the Hamza that can be assimilated, because you gave, in the example you gave, you said uh, taqwa, so it's the, 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 not only the Hamza. Right, that's correct, not only the Hamza. It, it can be a Hamza, so what, what, what's coming to mind now is that it's sometimes a Hamza, sometimes it's a wow, and I imagine it would also be potentially a yeah. Okay. Um, how do I know which one it is? Right at the beginning, it will just be trial and error. Right? Um, but what you can do is, you can just think what, root letters you know on the first bab and then you will uh, and that can kind of help guide you like for example the word ittaba. i already know the word tabia on the first bab means to follow um and uh, 
And so that kind of guides me into thinking that it's just two ta's over there. Um, the same goes for ittakhada. I know there's potentially a hamza there. And I know the root letters akhada. Um, means to take. So my like for somebody that knows a little bit of Arabic, if I didn't know the word ittakhada and I wanted to find it in a dictionary, I would first go to hamza khadal. Why? As an educated guess, I would say. Why? Because I'm already familiar with the root akhada. And in ittaba'a, as it could be wata'a, or, or sorry, waba'a. But I'm not accustomed to that. It's not like a common word. Or uh, aba'a. But that's not, a, I'm not accustomed to that. The root in this tabi'a, however, I am accustomed to it, means to follow. A tabi'i. Um, so my first guess would be to check that set of root letters. That's a bit of an educated guess initially. Um, but if you find it difficult to do that, then you could just do it by trial and error. Right? First check a Hamza, then, or first check a Ta, then check a Hamza, then check a Wow, and then a Ya. Yeah. And you will generally then come up to your, your answer. Is that clear? So for homework, we're going to complete this uh, page eight, the scale of page eight, inshallah. Just fill it out, fill out the, uh, the English or the translations of each of those words. And then um, what is the last homework that you had to do in, in Mazifi from the Quran? Bab seven. Bab seven. So you finish Bab 7 already. Um, then what you can do is you can do carry on to Bab 8 as well. Okay. You can do that page as well. Form 8 from Al Mazid Fihi from the Quran. Okay, Shad is with us. I'm going to hand over to him now, inshallah. Um, so, remember that page, Al-Mazid Fee from the Quran, Bab 8, and fill out the table of Bab 8. Walaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Azmana. Alhamdulillah, yourself. Alhamdulillah. This teaching early on a Sunday morning in Ramadan.